I now would like to progress on to share my sense of vision for what this means and where it's going from a technology perspective. You've probably heard this phrase, the science of wear. And we have wordized or made up this phrase as a way to characterize what each of you do. The science of wear. What is the science of wear? It's fundamentally the science of geography, what I would call the mother of all science. Brings all the ologies together, geology, psychology, sociology, <laughs> geography, right? Hugo, my good friend from Belgium here, is, um, is a geographer. Isn't that why you're smiling at me, Hugo? Thank you very much, thanks. It's reinforcing me, making me feel a little less insecure. But it's fundamentally the science of geography and the technology of GIS in combination. And we've watched this science emerge over the last 50 years as it's inched along with better technology, better abstraction technology, better analytic technology, better visualization technology, and so on. At this particular moment, it's safe to say that the science of where is creating a smarter world. We might describe it as location intelligence. We're getting smarter as a collective body. And I'll just turn this around to you because in many cases, your work is the work that's contributing to creating this intelligence. We're learning how to measure virtually everything that moves and changes with sensor networks, with remote sensing, with field observation. And this information is coming together in geographic information systems to create better understanding. And the foundation of the understanding is being used by decision makers and policy people to be able to take better action, to be able to make a better world, to heal our world, to manage our world, to be more effective in very specific ways in your organizations. Now, the science of where is not just the science and some technology, it's also a framework and a process. Take a look at this diagram. It starts by data measurement, and some of you are in the data measurement business, like the census or like NOAA. You're measuring and managing the data. And then it goes to visualization, making beautiful maps, as we most of us love. And then it, but it moves beyond that. It moves into the analytic modeling, being able to forecast or predict. And then it goes into the application of those forecasts or interpretations of the geography to be able to make better decisions or plans. And then ultimately it goes into action. And where the action is is where the kind of rubber hits the road. And while you may just think of yourself in one or two of these boxes, in fact, if we look at the whole audience here, you're representing pieces of this whole thing coming together, a more intelligent planet in evolution. And I think as we look forward, we can look forward to this creating a more sustainable future. This is our big objective, ladies and gentlemen. So we must be all in on this objective. Even though we're in our little stovepipe of measurement or analytics, ultimately we are being challenged at this point in human history to be able to get our act together. And I think my own personal feeling is that geographic knowledge is one of the keys, having that intelligence. So if we drill a little deeper into this technology of science, this science and technology, what, what is it? It provides us a framework where we can manage and analyze and apply geographic information. It starts with systems of record. So how many in the room here manage systems of record keeping? Yeah, I see, I see, you guys are not being real with me. There's more of them there, I hope. These are basically record-keeping systems for maintaining like the census or maintaining the water, maintaining the weather data. They're systems of record-keeping. And then it's also a system of insights. This is analytics, being able to understand and predict using map overlay and analytics and visualization. And finally, this framework provides us a system of engaging. So what is a system of engagement? Well, first, 
GIS is sort of the ultimate, mapping is sort of the ultimate system of engagement because it communicates with people. People get engaged with it. We understand it quickly. And technologically, that system of engagement, together with the other two in an integrated system, mean that we can actually leverage location to bring people together, to bring data together, to bring the holism of what, in fact, is real together. That's, okay, maybe you're sick of me talking about this as a, as a concept. To me, that's what the essence of GIS is about, using location to integrate all of it. Even though we're pieces in this overall puzzle, the bigger story is the whole. This kind of digital twin concept. Now, the science of where is advancing. It's advancing for many, for many reasons, but what's powering the advancement in part is because we're getting more data. Data about real-time weather, data about LIDAR, data about indoors, data, the sense, I mean, the volume of data, we need only look at the newspaper, is exponentially growing. And also, mobile technologies, new forms of computing, distributed computing, microservices, SaaS, IoT, the technology part is evolving. And so, also the GIS concepts that we have are evolving. Uh, more statistical tools that involve machine learning. We're able to build new methods, new visualization tools. These, these, <laughs> these independent technologies are being integrated into, into the science of wear. And in many ways, that's what my colleagues and I work on, building product technology which takes those fire hoses of change and evolves it in a rational way to build tools that actually help you do your work better. That's, that's the big context uh, for us. So we do this with a little technology called ArcGIS. So I'm here to simply say that we take those thrusts and embody them in a modern architecture. In the last few years, those of you who've been paying attention, realize that there's a big change that has been happening under our feet. It is that we can use services, that is dial tones of data coming together across the web as a way to integrate this data dynamically through overlaying maps dynamically. This opens up the opportunity to, instead of putting all the database in one machine or in one desktop, I can really read data in dynamically from many different sources. And also I can share data through the power of cloud and share it and collaborate with other people in whole new ways. So the concepts of this spatial infrastructure have been around for dozens of years, but it's only recently that this has empowered us to be able to share and use each other's data in this synergistic way. And for me, this is, I'm spending a lot of time on this because I really want to make sure you understand it. This is, this is the big revolution that's going to occur. How does this happen? It starts by being able to abstract heterogeneous data, imagery data, LIDAR data, tabular data, map data, abstract data into a set of services, web services, called maps or 3D scenes or layers. That means I don't have to take the data and copy it and merge it all into one big database. I can leave the data right where it is, but I can view it as a map. I can view it as a layer. I can view it as a 3D thing. And when I view it, I can mash up the views both graphically but also analytically. This is transformational to us. And this this abstraction thing allows us to simplify everything down to, I want to take that map and that map, and I want to overlay those maps and do something. So simplify is the big word here. And that means that I've got to be able to have a house where these simplifications live. And inside of ArcGIS, that's a portal which abstracts not just the data references, distributed data references with metadata, but also houses the metadata itself and also my apps and my people with identities because they're part of geographic knowledge. References my organizations that are participating in this federated vision. In other words, 
all aspects of geographic knowledge can be abstracted and then shared and used. And when you do that, what occurs is I can have any kind of app hit that environment. I can have field apps that discover this data set, I take it in the field, I update it, I share it. I can take analytic apps and visualization apps and dashboard apps that show me real time. So the app revolution can bring the power of GIS to everyone as a result. Everyone across the whole organization. This isn't just for the GIS elite. This means everybody in the organization, every office light can be lit up. Every organization can have geospatial intelligence or location intelligence available through simple maps on a device. In addition, this environment is opening up and making analytics available to the high-end people, like the people interested in data science. The inventions of Python open APIs allow me to mix geospatial data with with tools like R, the convenient tools of, of a data scientist, and at the same time, open up the rich power of GIS to exploratory tools like Insights, where I can search through combined data for people who have absolutely no GIS experience at all, or even technical experience. So those are the two dimensions of big change. So I'm sorry, but I'm talking a lot about the concepts behind what we're working on. And these concepts are to build a services-based environment which supports distributed systems being able to be woven together as a fabric. This means I can take GIS to a whole other scale. And this is, this is the big vision. I can interconnect systems. I can have this cross-system sharing as dial tones between, for example, I'll use the Weather Service because they were up here, and the Department of Ag, or between the Weather Service and um, a railroad company, or between a national agency and a local agency, or between a local agency and a national agency. We can depend upon and use each other's services in various ways. I like to call it a system of systems. And I think that that is what's evolving, ladies and gentlemen, in our future. ArcGIS, before I go any further, is a piece of software. It's software, but it's also cloud services. It's an open platform. It has desktops and servers and, and apps and open APIs for accessing it. At this generation, it's all services-based. So it is, you know, I pick up a client and it gets a service, a weather service, a soil service, a vegetation service, and so on. And it also can be distributed out. These three anchors I want to just uh, let you understand about. And it's, it's for individuals. I can just be little old me, pay a few hundred dollars a year and, and have it as a dial tone. Or it's for a whole organization, or now beyond organizations. 